So this video covers a few different definitions, all of which have to do with inverters. So we might as well start with the definition of inverter, which is now in Article 100. A uh, very simple definition. It's equipment that changes DC to AC. Now, these could be used in different types of systems, but for simplicity, I'm going to assume today that we're all talking about a solar PV installation, just so we're, you know, speaking the same language. So you've got your inverter. Now, inverters could be up on the roof. They could be down by the panel board or equipment. They could be underneath the modules. We'd call those microinverters. So inverters are simply equipment that changes DC to AC. Interactive inverters are a type of inverter. It's an inverter that's used in parallel with a power source, such as a utility to supply loads and can deliver power to the utility. Uh, an interactive inverter is what we pretty much always use with a PV system. So we want the, we want the PV system to be creating energy at all times, whether the utility is on or not, right? Because if we only created energy when the utility was off, <laughs> then we're going to be using our, our solar system for what, an hour, a year, you know, and we would never pay it off. So we want the util we want the PV system to be working whenever it possibly can. So we're going to use an interactive inverter. Now, of course, the problem with an interactive inverter is the fact that it, it is working when the utility is on. So what happens if the utility loses power? Well, here's where it can get a little bit tricky. You see, if I have a generator, uh, the generator, of course, uh, is not an interactive system. It, it works by itself. The power goes off, the generator turns on, and then the power comes back on, and the generator turns off. We don't want them working at the same time. And the reason we don't want them working at the same time is because we don't want to backfeed the grid and kill the utility workers. That's why we have transfer switches for generators, right? So when the power goes out, either automatically or manually, uh, we shut off, the, we, we break the connection to the utility, the generator turns on, gives us power to our house, and then when we get utility power back on board, the generator shuts off, so we're not backfeeding those utility workers and killing them. Well. With solar, we want it to be on all the time so that we can be producing energy and, and getting a return on our investment. So what happens when the utility loses power? Does that mean that our solar system is going to backfeed the grid and electrocute the utility workers? Obviously, that's not acceptable. So here's something that some people aren't aware of with a PV system. When you have an interactive inverter, that thing shuts off when the utility loses power. So you're not going to use your PV system as a backup for when the utility goes out, not unless you also install some other equipment. So that's kind of the idea with an interactive inverter. We also have a multi-mode inverter, which is kind of the best of both worlds. That's equipment that can act as an interactive or standalone inverter. So when the utility loses power, this thing can actually continue to, to run and it will actually have a, a, an isolation from the utility, just like a transfer switch would, and it will break contact with the utility and allow us to use our system even when the utility is shut off. That would be a multi-mode inverter. It gives us the best of both worlds. Uh, here in September of 2021, to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge, most multi-mode inverters uh, give you a pretty limited amount of power that you can use on the standalone side, but it could be enough power to supply, you know, essential loads at a house or something, which I mean, you know, you say essential loads, there, there's really not too many essential loads in a house. I mean, it, it, it might suck to lose your TV for a while, but nobody's going to die. So you don't need a lot of power, you know, for essential loads in your house. And you might be able to get that with a multi-mode inverter. We also have inverter input circuits and inverter output circuits, and they're exactly what those terms sound like. So what's an inverter input circuit? Uh, well, the conductor is connected to the DC input of an inverter. I mentioned that inverters could be small or microinverters up on the roof. They could be a large inverter like this one here that's installed. So the 
inverter input circuits are the DC conductors on the line side, if you will, of the inverter. Now, I hate to say line side and load side because there's kind of some bi-directional stuff happening, but the inverter input is the DC side, and of course the inverter output is what? It's the AC side. So that's your inverter output circuit. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.